Hello, and welcome back to the Mapping Channel by Sanborn and AppGeo. Today, we're taking a look at data-driven styling on Google Maps Platform with three live demonstrations of maps we've created using this new feature set. For those of you new to data-driven styling, it is a powerful new feature on Google Maps Platform, allowing you to bring in your own data combined with Google Polygon geometries to create powerful visualizations coupled with Google Maps base maps your users know and love. We see this as a great evolution for the platform and a step in the right direction for those customers who are looking to get more out of the platform. So we're gonna go ahead and hop into our first demo, which is a map created based on population by zip code, which is a data set that should be freely available for most parts of the country. So first things first, let's start by taking a look at the map and then I can show you in a little bit more detail how we put it together. So in this case, we have a population by zip code data set for the state of Massachusetts, where AppGeo is located. Zooming in, we are able to get a better look at all of those different zip code polygons. And as you can see, they're stylized according to this legend I've created on the right hand side here by how many people live within that zip code. It's a pretty simple relationship of a count to a unique zip code. We feed that information into the map and what data-driven styling does is create something you know, very visually appealing like this based on the colors that we've chosen for the breakpoints that we defined. Again, very easy to create once we have the data to work with. Now, if we take a look at the code here on the left, you can see this is what's actually feeding the map and furthermore defining the breakpoints. This is done through the code but this could just as easily be accessing an external file to read in these values to the Maps JavaScript API. So as you can see here, we have a zip code 02465 and a population 11,499. The map is going to read in that value, compare it to our breakpoints. In this case, it's gonna be in that third category. Getting just a little bit fancier now, we have another map to share with you. In this case, we're showing not just population, but residents per square mile. We've normalized the data based on the geographic size of the zip code being shown. And what that does for us is it creates a population density map. Additionally, we've brought in some markers here, which could represent your stores or your municipal locations. We can even add pop-ups to these to show off some different values that might relate to the data set you're trying to examine on the map. Additionally, for this example, I brought in quite a lot more zip codes covering pretty much the entire East Coast, just to give you a sense of the scalability and power of this feature in terms of how quickly it loads in all this data and how seamlessly it displays it atop that Google base map. We can even zoom all the way in right down to the street level to examine our data in more detail. In this final demo, we've visualized some real estate values sourced from the Redfin Open Data Portal. In this case, we have visualized zip codes with single family home sales and shown the average sale price for recent sales within those zip codes across really much of the Western half of the United States. So quite a large data set, as you can imagine, thousands upon thousands of potential zip codes to analyze there. And we can zoom all the way in to take a look in more vivid detail of what's underneath. As you can see in this example, we have all of those points of interest from Google Maps populated on the map as well as our own data set. So I can click on those to maybe get a sense for what is around a particular property or get a better sense of some of these pricing variations. Now, of course, these are all just examples to inspire you to create your own visualizations using data-driven styling and we'd love to see what you come up with. If you'd like to experiment with these further or learn more, we have the full version of this webinar you can access for both government use cases and commercial use cases, which will be linked in the description below. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we look forward to seeing you next time.